All right, so the main topic of today's video is kind of heavy. I'll tell you right now, but it's a pressing matter that's only going to get worse, and that's why we do need to address will, it. So hopefully you um, will go through it, no matter how depressing it might be. So the plan is we are going to lighten the mood up with some of Trudeau's complete and utter stupidity in the way of word salads with two videos, because let's face it, the guy is never going to step down no matter what. So we might as well laugh and laugh we shall. And then we're going to follow that up with a video of, of Tucker Carlson addressing a Republican crowd. And you tell me, you can go right in the comments right afterwards and tell me if you can draw any comparisons between what he's addressing going on in the United States with what's happening with the present Trudeau government. But just before we rip into the Justin Trudeau footage, let's look at what was provided to us today from Carla Joy Threadway, who you can follow at the Sovereign CEO on Twitter. This is a pretty humorous look at some of the dire problems facing Canada today. So kick back and have yourself a laugh before we launch into the dour heavy stuff. Okay, I'm Canadian. I strangely enough never studied finance, taxes, or budgets in the Canadian public education system, but luckily for me, I can trust our Liberal government to spend our money responsibly. My kids, they'll probably never be able to afford a house again, but at least we're still continuing to invest in gender politics and Peruvian rock music. And I'm sure the people in line at the food bank understand the importance of finding social justice through distinctions in modest fashion. I just have a tiny little woman brain. So I trust that the $30,000 in taxpayer funds used to study Canada's space exploration program from an intersectionalist, feminist, and decolonialist lens was well worth it. And the CBC that we all know and love, you know, they get 1.39 billion in taxpayer funds, even though viewership has dropped 7.6% to just 2.1% under Catherine Tate's leadership. She deserves a thousand dollar a night taxpayer paid vacation to France. We're investing in our military too. The Defense Department spent 34.8 million on developing new sleeping bags, which turned out to be completely useless. But hey, at least we tried. And maybe our progressive urban city centers can use those for the 11.2% of Canadians who are homeless now. The Auditor General may have found that 32 billion has been overpaid in suspicious payments that require further investigation. But I know my government loves me in that special Menendez Brothers way. My last Tim Hortons bill, it might have been $50 for two coffees, but I know it's well worth it because our Liberal government has been hard at work investing in our country and Peruvian gender studies and rock music. Mm, yummy. There are a lot of pressures on our system. Um, increasing the immigration levels, interestingly, will take some of the pressure off of the system uh, because the stream on bringing in permanent residents uh, is has got room to bring in more. And the big questions that we get all the time is, you know, as our government is raising immigration levels to the highest levels they've ever been, in a few years we'll be bringing in 500,000 people a year. Um, people are like, well, we're already facing challenges in housing. Um, you know, where are we going to house these 500,000 people a year? Well, a lot of those people will be able to contribute in the building trades. Today we're announcing that we will reduce the number of immigrants we bring in over the next three years, which will result in a pause in the population growth over the next two years. Opposition pushing a brokenest vision of Canada. Brokenest? It's not even a word. <laughs> Again, Mr. Speaker, we see the leader of the opposition pushing a brokenest vision of Canada that is simply not aligned with the reality. Mr. Speaker, brokenest. It's not even a word. You know, he's even breaking the English language. Oh, my goodness. The story the country tells itself about reality has flipped. None of the normal people are supporting the democratic machine. Tim Walls is supporting the democratic machine. A man you would never allow to babysit your own children. That's the archetype. It's the party of weirdos, of envy, of hate, of resentment, of bitterness, of weakness of a total lack of creativity. It's a party of conformity. It's a party of the machine, where it doesn't matter who the candidate is because individuals are immaterial. All that matters is the collective. That's the Soviet model. 
and opposing them is the rest of the country slowly waking up to the fact that these people have no moral authority whatsoever, they have no legitimacy in a democracy where the government must rule by the consent of the government, they have no consent. And the way that they've treated this country over the past four years is the most shocking thing I've ever seen in 55 years. To allow millions of people, mostly young men with no skills and no English, into our country illegally, and then fly them around at our expense and give them phones and put them on welfare programs that no American citizen can get? It is the most insulting? Yeah, boo. But it's worse than boo. That's the biggest crime in the history of the United States of America. And it takes incredible, it takes incredible stones, it, incredible gall for the people who did that to stand up there on a stage and give you a lecture about how you're immoral. It's too much. And so that's the second important thing about this election, okay? The first is every person in this room needs to understand you are not in a despised minority. You are in an incredibly gentle and tolerant majority who put up with this crap for way too long as they insulted not only you, but the memory of your ancestors who died for this country. They tore down statues to their memory. People have never built anything in their lives. They went out of their way to humiliate you and spit on you and the graves of your ancestors. And that's not an exaggeration, they did that. And the, this country is so nice, it's so polite, it's so thoughtful and empathetic and sweet, it's the kind of country that loves dogs and gives directions to strangers that we put up with it for four years. But we can't anymore. We just can't. The video you're about to watch next comes by way of a gentleman that goes by the handle Rad Mage on YouTube. I will have a link to the original video in the show notes for this video, so be sure to check that out. Throw him your support. Let him know. Read, people are uh, out there. I'm just going to read part of the intro he has for this to give you an idea of what you're getting into. In this video, I dive into the quiet desperation that has crept into my life. As a 44-year-old man, my days have become a blur of routine and repetition, each one blending into the next. From starting my day with tea and heading out to work, to watching time pass and feeling my plans for the future slipping away, I find myself questioning if this is really living or just existing. This is a side effect of globalism. We'll get into that in a minute, like why that is. Um, and sadly, Justin Trudeau, who supports the globalist agenda, is helping to perpetuate this problem. Also, just to show you that this is not just some isolated incident, that there's a reason why movies like Fight Club or the first Joker film are so popular. It's because men have never been so lost. And here's evidence of that. I'm going to read you the number one comment in Rad Mage's video. It reads as follows. 57 here. All the dreams that I chased failed. No kids, no wife, haven't had sex, let alone a girlfriend in years. No savings, live paycheck to paycheck. Every day I get up and do the exact same thing. I often cringe when people ask me, what's new? Because I don't have anything to tell them. I can only talk about my past when I had a life. Only have one friend who I physically see maybe once a year. I have no passion left for anything. Absolutely nothing excites or motivates me anymore. I'm essentially riding out the clock with life. I often think of the line from the song Old Man River from the opera Porgy and Bess. I'm tired of living, but scared of dying. Hello, I'm David. And for the past six years or so, my life has mostly been the same. I start my day the same way. I shower, I get dressed, I make tea, Earl Grey, hot. I grab a prepared lunch to take to work that I had made the night before. I grab my bag and I leave for work. I saw others swallowed up by quiet desperation, yet here I am now too. It's a low risk but low reward. Stay the course, cling on to this empty but sort of easy 
style of life. In most days, I can't even stand my job anymore. And it's all kind of just working for the purpose of paying for things that I neither want nor enjoy and certainly don't find any kind of meaning from at all. I am convinced that footage that you just saw, a huge part of that lends itself to the mass immigration problem we're seeing not only in Canada, but across North America in general, as well as Europe. Men are being replaced. And as such, they're losing their sense of self-worth. As you can see in that video by Rad Mage, he's got the toys he needs, right? Like he's clearly not impoverished. Money is not the problem. He's lost his sense of purpose. When men lose pieces of themselves, it's, it's very, very devastating. And look, I'm gonna go on record right now, just in case you're going through anything and I'm gonna share something with you. So as an entrepreneur, I have had more of my share of downs and my share of ups. It's a rough life, let me tell you. Somewhere along the way, it's actually 2016, I was running a successful Amazon store until it eventually tanked. Now, up until 2016, I had been involved in other businesses and other ventures that had collapsed. But I guess since I was doing so well with that Amazon store, that was my point of no return. After that Amazon store crashed, something in me kind of crashed with it, kind of died and never came back. As you saw in yesterday's video, I'm about to open a new restaurant. And in the spring, I plan on launching a new real estate brokerage and I'm still working on our business. But one thing I'm finding is that even with new opportunities, even with success, when that part of you, when a part of you disappears, like I don't think you can come back. At 47, I no longer consider myself a young man anymore, but I'm not an old man either. So I don't know what to say. Is that part of me gone forever? If you're a man and you lose a part of yourself, will you ever get that back? I don't know. I mean, that's kind of what they alluded to in the story American Beauty, right? With Kevin Spacey. Whereas we find our society with men like Rad Mage who are struggling to find purpose, you also have the polar opposite, people who are given too much of the wrong purpose. So to close things out, I'm going to share with you footage of a wannabe martyr from Gaza talking about how his three-year-old and his other young child were killed. And he doesn't care because it is the will of Allah and he's looking forward to dying in the name of Allah also. Yeah, I told you this was going to be a sad ending but you stuck with me. And I thank you for that. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll catch you <laughs> the liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.